Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well and today I'm going to be doing an article. Uh, Disney Star Wars is dumb is the name of the uh, the blogger here and I just want to give a huge shout out. His name is Ishibaka on Twitter. If you have not followed him yet, he's a really cool guy. Um, he, he constantly is putting out articles about Star Wars, about the Phantom Menace, and it's always very well done, very well put together, and it's just really good stuff. So follow him at Ichibaka. He was the one that actually reached out to me and asked me to uh, go through this article and to make a video about it because he believes that what's about to happen is that the Star Wars media, uh, the very <laughs> biased Star Wars media, is about to put out a hit piece on the Star Wars fandom, similar to what they did with the Kelly Marie Tran situation, currently, you know, similar to what they did with this story of Rey and, you know, trying to say, oh, it's this, this toxic fan base. It's this toxic, toxic white masculinity. That's the reason and cause for all of this nonsense. And it just really is important for us to understand where a lot of this comes from. They, they already tried to hijack one story. They tried to hijack the Ahmed Best story and say, oh, that was all the fans. It's like, well, did fans not like that character? Did the fans not like Jar Jar Binks? Absolutely. But the ones who attacked him, the ones that went after him personally, the ones that really degraded him was the media because they did not like that character. They thought that character was a caricature. Now we can argue that one way or the other of a particular race, um, you know, that, that that's what the mindset was, but they went after him. They, they went after him really hard. And so when he finally opened up about how at one point he had contemplated suicide and, you know, there's a picture of him with his son trying to say, you know, that he's found a reason to live. It was this beautiful moment. Guess what happened? The fans were there for him. And the fans have been there for him for a very long time. Even people that don't like Jar Jar Binks. I don't like Jar Jar Binks. I hold nothing against the actor. I hold nothing against him because he is not the reason why the character exists. He is not the reason why the character is portrayed the way that he is. He is giving a performance and he does it a very, like, even though the character might be annoying to me, he does a really good job because that's what the character is supposed to be. And so, to me, that's a great situation because when, or a good example, because when he was confronted and asked, you know, you know, what, you know, what's your story here? He said very straightly and, and, and very rightly that it was the media that tore him down. It was the media that went after him. And the same thing happened here. And so this article that, uh, that Ichibaka did is what really happened to Jake Lloyd because we've heard a lot of different things. And it's one, another one of those stories where they try and bring it in saying, oh, the fandom menace is just a bunch of toxic white men. And it's interesting because this is a white man. And it's interesting that they obviously haven't gone after this story story nearly as much as the others, which is kind of interesting when you think about it. That they'll go they'll go after it when it's someone of a different race, or they'll go after it when it's someone of a different gender. But when it comes to this, they they've been relatively silent. Obviously, they they put their pot shots in every now and then, but they've mostly stayed silent on this. And it's interesting, you know. It's, it's a similar situation that's happened in both both times with the character not being very strong and with the actor being treated a certain way. But once again, we see one of the reasons why is not just because it was the media that went after him, but also possibly because of his race and gender. I mean, I think that's a fair – if they're going to ask the question about, you know, the way that I interact or the way that I act when, I, when I'm reviewing Captain Marvel trailer, I could do it to them as well. But anyway, we see this. Recent events has the shill media blaming fan backlash for the tragic turn that Jake Lloyd's life has taken, but as always, the media narrative is easily discredited. So what really happened? When we look at the media publications from 1999, we see that the media didn't have too many kind things to say about the young Jake, Jake Lloyd. And so – what he's doing here, what Ichibak is doing so well here, is he's giving us actual evidence. He's giving us actual textual evidence from the time of different people. And I remember I did this when I talked about Jake Lloyd not too long ago, where I showed, here is an article from this time, or rather when I covered on my best, saying here's an article of them talking about Jar Jar Binks, and here are the things that they were saying about the character. And so once again, we see that it was the media's portrayal, it was the media's interaction here that caused a lot of this chaos in this poor young kid's life. So it says, young Anakin is poorly characterized. You never believe this angel face laugh could ever become Darth Vader much better had he been a little older and drawn like Edward Furlong Sean Connor character in Terminator 2 where basically where basically a good lad could convincingly go bad depending on how nurtured the people of Mos Espa annoyingly called young Anakin Annie leading you to expect the young prodigy to break into tomorrow at any moment this also explains why in later years he takes to wearing a black dress it's an interesting take on the character. Also from The Guardian, Anakin Skywalker's hair. Star Wars has never been strong on hair. Leia looked like she was wearing earmuffs, but Anakin's hair is truly revolting. Again, interesting take on that. From Newsweek, the kid can't act. Insiders call nine-year-old Jake Lloyd, who plays Anakin Skywalker, Mannequin Skywalker. Word is he stinks. Counter buzz, but he's so cute. That is a headline from Newsweek. I, again, you, you can we can have that kind of conversation and say, you know, it wasn't a very strong performance. But the fact that this came out 
when this kid was still like 9, 10, maybe 11 years old, depending on how long the film took, and they were going after saying the kid can't act and insiders are calling him Mannequin Skywalker, do you know what kind of effect that that media portrayal of a 9-year-old – it's one thing if – an adult. It's one thing if I were to get into a film. It would, it would be one thing if I were to act in a film and then be told something and you know be be criticized for it. It's another when it's a nine-year-old kid who's being criticized in this way. It's it's kind of just disgusting. In fact, the article from Newsweek was so upsetting that Ron Howard himself wrote an article in 1999. Ron Howard wrote an article speaking from his own experience as a child actor. So he says there, as someone who was acting at professionally a young at an early age, I can assure you that nine-year-old Jake is quite capable of reading, understanding, and feeling the full humiliation of a piece like that. He may not be able to comprehend the reason that it was printed, however, but then obviously neither can I. Maybe someone from your editorial staff should try and explain it to him, Ron Howard. I think that is a huge boom to this story. It's a it's a huge part of it because you're having someone else who's a child actor, someone else who knows how much of a role the media and also Hollywood in general plays in just setting up especially child actors up for for failure because of not only these these hit pieces, but also because they put these kids into an environment that is just actually toxic. If you want to talk actually toxic environments, look to Hollywood. Look to all the disgusting nasty things going on in Hollywood. And, and, and that's, that should be more of proof about why it's, it's more dangerous and it's more toxic there than it is in the Star Wars fan base. Because even though I was critical of the character, even though I was critical of Jar Jar Binks, even though I was critical of the, of the prequels, I still never would attack a nine-year-old kid in the way that Newsweek did. In 2017, Bleeding Cool warned the fans that Ron's letter might be a bad omen for Solo. That's right, Ron Howard thought The Phantom Menace was truly amazing. Howard doesn't go into detail about how much Jar Jar Binks played into his verdict, but at this point, it's probably safe to assume that Howard loved Jar Jar. He was probably his favorite character in the entire franchise, maybe tied with the Ewoks. Hell, he maybe even they may even bring him back for Han Solo since he liked Phantom Menace so much. That's an interesting take on it. Ten years after the release of The Phantom Menace, Jake Lloyd was interviewed at Super Nova in Australia. And I'm going to post a link to this article so that way you can watch the video for yourself and also so that way you can read this article and give um, Ichibaka some love. Who does he blame? Not fans in general, but rather high school and college students. High school, they wouldn't let it go. You know how they can be in high school. They're so charming and intelligent, awesome people. Yeah, that was wonderful. College has been similar. Again, you'll never find more intelligent, charming people than the drunk students of the college world. And I think that is truly where it is. I can imagine that this kid and I've seen it happen because I've seen kids, maybe not you know, not as big as Jake Lloyd, not in a film as big as Star Wars, but I've seen people who have done, uh, who've been a part of Hollywood, and I see the way that they're treated. You know, when when they've been seen on something, they are treated differently. Let alone if you are portrayed in a story in a movie where you're having articles like Newsweek coming out attacking your character, attacking you personally. That's going to have an effect, not just you as a kid, you know, not only just through high school, but even through college as well. So, of course, it makes sense that he has now in this space now where he's been attacked so much by by the media, not 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 just not not the fans, not like the hardcore fans, but by the media, by Hollywood, by people that he interacted with on a daily basis. And what else did he have to say about about fans at a convention? He says, it depends on the fan, obviously, but the way this one is set up, I've noticed that a lot of people just know each other already. It's really nice to kind of stand on the outside of that and see them co uh, commingle and enjoy each other's company and just know that they're here to have fun and everyone can relate to that. Every time I come to one of these, there's always people who bring their younger children, like 9 or 10 years old, who just absolutely love the film. That's so powerful. That is such a big thing. The fact that he is able to interact with kids who were the same age that he was when he was brutally attacked in this way in the media and is able to see the love that they have for his story, the love that they have for his character, because I don't think anyone's going to deny that kids probably really liked that film. I remember when I was a kid, when I was growing up watching those prequels, I liked them initially when I saw them in theaters. It wasn't until I grew up a little bit and realized, okay, there are some problems with the story, there are problems with some of the characters that I ever had to start a critical mind of it. But at the end of the day, I mean, I was around that age, maybe even a little bit younger. No, no, I was around that age, actually, when this stuff was going on. And so I was able to connect to the character, and I found it to be very, very powerful. And uh, just one last thing that I want him to, to, to want to point out, especially about this article, is another quote from Jake Lloyd where he says, It's nice. You come for the fans. That's why you're here for, to meet people who take you into their home and enjoy what you did. And, or even if they didn't, they still want to come up and ask questions and sort things out for themselves, and that's what you're here for. So as we can see, then Ichibaka says, he, so he wasn't blaming genuine fans at all. Are there jackoffs out there that will probably say something that will probably be mean and disgusting? Absolutely. Again, human nature is flawed, so we're always going to have people, unfortunately, like that. 
that. But when you look at hardcore fans, when you look at genuine fans, people who actually love the product and want to see the product succeed, you see overwhelming support for these stories. You see overwhelming support for these people as people. I can be critical of Rose Tico all day, but I'm never going to say a terrible word against Kelly Marie Tran because everything that I've seen about her shows that she's a good person. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to criticize the character because the character is very weak. It's poorly written. It goes on the story arc that's just a road to nowhere. So I'll go ahead and talk about that, but I'm not going to attack her. I'm not going to attack her personally. And, and, and most people in the Phantom Menace, most people who are part of this movement are not going to do that because we're real fans. And we understand that there are people on the other side of this. So it just sucks that we're being demonized, and it sucks that there are people right now probably trying to prepare for the next hit piece to go after the Phantom Menace. I I'm just – I'm waiting because you know it's coming. You know – and I remember I said this months ago where I said, you know, eventually they're going to start going after people like Jeremy. They're going to go after Ethan Van Skyver. We've already seen them start to go after Ethan Van Skyver in a lot of ways, but – I mean, it's going to happen. They're going to try and put some hit piece out there to totally uh, discredit a lot of the things that we've been saying. And it's going to be nasty. And it's going to be a very nasty time when that eventually happens. And so it is now time for us to step up. It is now time for us to be very, very, very clear about all the things going on because, unfortunately, we look at all of this thing. Again, he was not blaming the fans. In fact, he said very clearly that he loves the fans. He loves going because even if the fans didn't like the film, they still would come up to him and show him respect and show him love and be a fan and be a fan because that's what true fandom is. Fandom is love for a product. And we love this product so much that we're willing to defend it against people who are going to try and tear it down, against people who don't really love the product, who want to twist it into some political nonsense that we don't want to see. And it's sick that they're going to try and take stories like this, where they're the ones that are probably the most culpable, and try and turn it around on the fans who we see overwhelmingly every time Jake here speaking, Ahmed Best too. Look at what Ahmed Best said recently. He had nothing but love for the fans because the fans show almost entirely 99% love back to him. Even though I'm still critical of that character, he's a great guy. He actually goes to these conventions. He actually interacts with the fans, and that is cool. That is awesome. That is something worth praising. But anyway, guys, um, what are y'all's thoughts about this? Again, I know that this is kind of old news for, for a lot of us who, who know about this situation, but I do think it's very serious because, you know, this was a kid who was innocent. This was a kid who was, again, about nine years old when this film came out. All of this hate from the media and from the people around him was, was coming to him at a very young age. And so it makes a lot of sense that he's going through and struggling with so many things right now. And as time again, we see this, you know, you know, this side by side shot. We know that he's going through some very tough times right now. And it's just it's important for us to know where it came from. It's important for us to know what's going on, where it came from, who's to blame, and how we can try to prevent this going in the future. Because you know that they're going to keep coming with these attacks. When episode 9 comes out, you are damn right that they're going to come out once again trying to say, oh, those people, there's these alt-right people who are boycotting the film because they are racist and sexist. You know that those stories are going to come out. You know they're going to try and pick, pick and choose certain lines from certain people to try and discredit them. You know it's coming. You know it's going to happen. And it's important for us to be very clear where we stand and to be very clear in where we know where the truth is. And this is reality. This is the truth. Get out of your stupid SJW bubble, the media, and actually live in the real world. Anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Go check out Ichibaka on Twitter. Again, uh, Disney Star Wars is dumb.wordpress.com. I'm going to post a link to this article in the description for this video. So if you want to give it some love, if you want to watch some of the videos that he posted, please do so. If you want to read the rest of the article for yourself, please do so as well. And also, please give Ichibaka, Ichibaka a follow on Twitter as well. Again, he's a really cool guy. He retweets me all the time, and so I just want to give him some love. Uh, he reached out to me. Uh, because he honestly thinks that there are people out there that are going to start to try and do hit pieces, you know, based off of this information. So I wanted to make sure that I was able to get a video out ahead of the curb because of that. So thank you, Ichibaka, for reaching out to me. Thank you all guys so much for watching. Have a great day. And as always, God bless.